Jesus. He turned water to wine. We want to look at this message. Jesus turned water to wine. Jesus turned water to wine. And see what we can benefit from it because there are so many controversies about this. People ask so many questions. But listen and follow me, I will take you through the scriptures. What type of wine did Jesus turn water to? Is it good that we drink wine? Or what is wine? We are going to differentiate them. We see what the Bible says. Because some people say the Bible didn't say don't drink. He said don't be drunk. But as a child of God, we want to see what does the Bible say about this whole thing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let me read from chapters 2. 1 to 11. On the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples. Both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. Verse 5. And his mother said unto, his, unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six, verse 6, six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three Pankins apis. I will tell you what that means as we go on. I'll read that in another version. Now, and then verse 7, Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water, and they fill them up to the brim. Verse 8, and he said unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear unto it, and they bear it. And verse 9, and when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew. And the governor called, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, praise the Lord, Hallelujah. and said unto them, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine, and when they have well drunk, it says, Then, the, the worst is brought. Says, but thou hast brought a good wine, kept the good wine till now. Verse 11 it says, This the be, this is the beginning of the miracles that Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory. And manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, from this passage we have just read, this is an account of the very first miracle Jesus Christ performed. Come and say first. It was the first miracle that Jesus Christ performed during his days in the flesh. In fact, unless there were so many people used to have some, uh, you know, they say uh, Jesus when he was young he did some miracle. Never. If you read your scriptures very well you will see that it was after his baptism he was taken immediately into the wilderness for 40 days and fasting. And immediately after that this happened. Amen. Amen. If you go and read the book of Luke, that account of Luke, you will see them uh, one after the other. I will be talking about how he was, uh, you know, baptized by John, and after the baptism by John, the Bible says the Spirit took him immediately into the wilderness for forty days, and after that, when he came back. Before he started doing his miracles, he started his ministry. So this was the very first miracle Jesus Christ performed. Amen. 
and then we can learn many other things about it. The performance about this miracle clearly shows that Jesus regards marriage. That was why he was invited to amen, the marriage. Uh, and don't forget, he was invited and his disciples. They should have known what he stands for. For before they invited him. Praise the Lord. And then it also shows that Jesus is not only interested in the spiritual needs of man, but he's also interested in other areas of man's uh, needs. It also shows that. It tells us that Jesus, you know, not just for us to go to heaven, but he also wants us to enjoy the goodness and the provisions that he has for us. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 will say, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ uh, Jesus. Praise the Lord. So Jesus turned water into wine so that there can be merriment among the people at that time. Amen. Amen. But the question is this, what to kind of wine did he turn water into? We've had so many people say some say it's alcoholic. Some say it's this. They want to ask ourselves, did Jesus really turn water into an alcohol? Amen. Amen. You will discover that the devil is being magnifying this. Satan is such a wicked being. He's such a wicked being that he will not hesitate to use anything that is made by God for his own purpose. He will not hesitate to use anything that is made by God for his own uh, purpose. To use, he, you know, he has been using this and this has been affecting people. He has told many people that the wine made by Jesus is an alcoholic wine. And through this, he has successfully kept so many people in drunkenness. Through this, he has successfully kept so many people in drunkenness. Maybe Jesus turned water. Have you not heard somebody say that? Jesus turned water into wine. Maybe Jesus turned water into wine. He has succeeded in using many to turn many into drunkenness. So follow me, I will show you scriptures as we read this one. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, the first thing we will need to know is this. That there are different types of wine. There are different types of wine. Amen. Before we begin to talk, we will ask ourselves, we look at some logic. Could Jesus have really turned water into wine? Into that type of wine? There are different types of wine. If we look at, uh, you know, uh, 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 Genesis chapters 9 Genesis chapters 9 and verse 21 you will see where something happened there first Genesis chapters 9 and verse 21 we see Mechisedek we see Mechisedek there sorry I'm talking about Genesis chapter 14 chapter 14 Genesis chapter 14 verse 18. Genesis I will still come back to that Genesis chapter 9. We see Mechisedek, the king of Salem. The Bible says he brought bread. Somebody say bread. And wine. For he was the high priest of the most high God. He brought bread and he brought wine. For he was a high priest of the most high God. The Bible does say, no, I don't want to talk about this. The Bible says, Mechisedek is a man, you know, people see him as Christ. He had no beginning of days or end of life. He just appeared and went off. And that was the first person Abraham paid tithes to. So in other words, Abraham paid tithes to God from the first. Ever before um, the law was given to Moses. But that's not where I am going. But the Bible says, he, he brought forth bread and wine. What was the symbolic nature of this bread and wine? It was talking about the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus ahead. When Jesus was to do the same, when Jesus was to do the same, the Bible told us that Jesus took wine, isn't it? And he took bread. 
And he says, this is my body, drink. And this is my blood. So Jesus himself at that time took wine and he took uh, bread. What type of wine did he take at that time? Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew 26. Please just follow me in this study. Matthew chapter 26, verse 29. Verse 29. Now, if I start from verse 27, Jesus says something there. He says, and he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to them and he said, drink all of you but this is my blood of the New Testament which is shared for many for the remissions of sins. Look at verse 29. It says, but I say unto you I will not drink as fort from this what? Fruit of the wine. Somebody say fruit of the wine. Fruit of the vine. So that wine was the fruit of the vine. The fruit of the vine is purely unalcoholic. He says, I will henceforth not drink from this fruit of the vine until I see you. So Jesus himself drank wine. Hello. Because they were on table together, he brought wine and he drank it. Could Jesus have been drinking alcohol? Amen. Amen. So that wine is the fruit of the vine. There's a vine tree that produces uh, the fruit of it produces this wine. Amen. So there are some wines that are unalcoholic is in the Bible and there are some wine that are alcoholic is in the Bible. So the fact that it doesn't wine does not imply that that wine is spoke about is an alcoholic wine. And then when you look at the things about Jesus himself, you will ask yourself, could he have turned water into an alcoholic? Somebody who came to make peace, can he bring something that will bring destruction? Can he? Answer me. Amen. So, there is the fruit of the vine. And then there is the alcohol. Amen. So there are types of alcohol. If you look at uh, the other type that I will mention, there's another type, and the Bible talks about it. Let's see the book of uh, Isaiah. Let me show. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 30. Let me take you there first. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 30. You will see another kind of wine. Proverbs chapter 23. Please put off your phones or put it on silence when you are in church. Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23. Are we there? Let me read from verse 30. Let me just show you verse 31. Or even if I read from verse 30, it says, They that tarry long at the wine, they that go seek mixed wine. Somebody say mixed wine. That means it's no longer an ordinary wine. It's a mixed wine. Then look at verse 31 where I'm saying. Look not thou upon. Look not. Somebody say look not. Don't even look at it. Look not thou upon the wine. When it is that redness may not just be in color. When it is red when it giveth its color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright, that means when it's a hot type, when it's an alcoholic type, don't look at it. Look at what things we do at last. At the last, it does what? It biteth like a serpent and it stinketh like an adder. At the last, it does what? It biteth like a serpent and it stinketh like an adder. What does it say in instruction? Look 
not unto such wine. So there is a wine Jesus turned water to. There is a wine that we are asked not to look at, but they are all called wine. So there are other places the Bible will now call it strong drink. But the fact that it's just called wine on some places does not mean that all the wine are alcoholic. So there are different types of wine in the Bible. Amen. There are different types of wine in the Bible. If you see that Genesis chapters 9 and verse 21 to 29, we will see that Noah drank one of such wine. Noah drank an alcoholic wine. What happened to him? He was naked. He, he drank the wine. The wine messed him up. And he was naked. If you read that scriptures, that the spouse of Noah, they could not say, look at our father misbehaving. So there is a wine that can make you to misbehave. He drank it. He was naked. The children closed their eyes and used a wrapper to cover him. He became like a madman. Amen. He Amen. became like a man. man. Lot. Lot. Lot also was another person. Lord, the daughters know the evil of wine. And, and what did they do? When they went out and they were alone, the senior daughter and Coco were alone. And they told the other one, let us make our father drunk. We are here. There is nobody here. Let's make him lie with us. We know when he drinks. When he drinks, if we don't know what he's doing, is that what Jesus will encourage any person to do? And they made their father to be drunk. In Genesis chapter 19, if you read from verse 32 to 35, they made their father to be drunk. And after their father drank, the Bible says he did not know what he was doing. He did not know that the daughters came to sleep with him. Amen. That is the destruction that wine can do. And the Bible says, look not unto such wine. When it is foaming like that, because at the end it will bite. And it will stink. Every child of God must not take alcohol. Amen. I'm still going to talk about We are still going on. So there are different types of wine, which I've just tried to prove. You see, it talks about it as wine. Did we not see that? He call it wine. The other one, they also call it wine. So the question is, could Jesus have turned water into the alcoholic wine? The question, the answer is, uh, no. He did not. Amen. He did not. Praise the Lord. So, like I told us, there are many kinds of wine. Why are we sure that Jesus did not turn water into an alcoholic wine. Let me give you some analogies before we begin to talk about the other things that Bible talks about wine. Number one, Jesus is a priest and a king. And the Bible gave a strong instruction that priests and kings must never take alcohol. Amen. Priests and kings must never take uh, alcohol. Now, did you see Jesus in the Bible open the Old Testament before? Have you read it? Didn't you read it? When Jesus came to the temple, they brought him the book of uh, Isaiah and he opened chapter 60 and he read the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. So at that time, all the scriptures were there. So he knows what it means. The Bible tells us in Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 8, verse 11. Let's open and see. Leviticus chapter 8, Leviticus chapter 8, and verse 11. Let's see what it says there. And Moses, Leviticus, chapters 10, sorry, verse 11. Chapters 10, verse 8 to 11. Are we there? And the Lord said unto Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine nor strong drink. 
you will understand the kind of wine he's talking about. Do not drink wine or strong drink. Thou nor thy sons with thee. When thou go into the tabernacle, least you will die. It shall be a status for you throughout your generation that you might put a difference between the holy and the unholy. Between the clean and the unclean. You must be able to differentiate. This one is not good. This one is good. That you might put a difference between the holy and the unholy, the clean and the unclean. Don't take wine or strong drink. Things that you know they are unholy, they are unclean. Don't take it. Put a difference between it. So he was talking to Aaron as a priest. Because as a priest that time they are not to take uh, wine. Are you following me? Now if you look at Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 4. Verse 4. It says, Proverbs chapter 31 verse 4. It is not for kings. It is not for kings to drink wine. Nor for priests. Princes. Strong drink. It's not for kings to drink wine or princes to drink strong drink. So Jesus Christ, who is he? Is a priest. Could he that is a priest go and turn? He knows. Can we go and turn water into alcohol that is not supposed to drink? Answer me. Answer me. No. Amen. So Jesus is a priest and will not use alcohol. So he cannot turn water into alcohol. Then number two, Jesus is the prince Jesus as the Prince of Peace will not produce something that will cause trouble for his people. Alcohol has brought about many broken homes. You see, somebody will just drink and when they come, they will begin to beat uh, give the wife up her cup. Amen. And so many other things like that. So, it has, you know, it will not bring Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace, will not cause people to cause trouble that will cause people to have accidents. People have gotten drunk and they had an accident. Or termination of appointment. Or quarreling or fighting. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says he's the prince of peace. Will he do that? Will he give a call that I know when they drink it they will go and have accidents? Or they will go and have a... Will he do that? Let's reason it ourselves. Forgetting number one is the priest. He must not use wine. Then number three, Jesus came. What did he come to do? To show man the way of God. Will Jesus that came to show man the way of God? Will he make a man to drink wine to forget the way of God? In that Proverbs chapter 31 that we read, if you read verse 4 and 5, in that Proverbs chapter 31, if you read verse 4 and 5, if you read verse 5, it says it's not for prince to drink wine. Verse 5 will say, Least, lest they drink and forget what the law. Lest they drink and forget the law and perverse the judgment of any of the afflicted. Will Jesus want somebody who will drink wine so that he will go and forget the law or go against God? Will he turn water into such wine? Answer me. No. I'm just giving you reasons why you oh, should know he didn't do that. Apart from the fact that we have differentiated the various wine, and you know that it is not for kings to drink uh, wine. The Jesus who came to die so that man can go to the kingdom of God, will he produce for man what will prevent him from going to heaven? Will he? And he went and did that as miracle? No. He will not do that. The Bible says all that take these things, where will be their portion? They will go to hell. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 10. So 
says their path is the lake of fire. Amen. Then number five, Jesus who is the giver of life. Jesus as the giver of life, will he also give to man something that will lead to sickness and death? Will he, will he give to somebody something that will lead to sickness and death? Then look at Proverbs chapter 31 verse 6. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 6. What does he say there? Give strong drink to him that is ready to will Jesus go and give somebody drink for him to perish? He says he came that we will not perish but have everlasting life. And then the Bible says and he knows the scriptures. He is the word. And then he will now go and say give you drink to perish. Will the one that gave life come to give you what will make you to perish? Answer me no. Amen. Are you following me? So yeah, whenever yeah. any person say, but Jesus turned what time to what you should better be very, very He says, give strong drink to him that is ready to perish. And when you look at it, it says, and wine to those that be of heavy heart. This wine here is also alcohol that he's talking about. The one that is mixed. Are you getting me? Because you see some people now, they say, ah, I just want to drink to forget my sorrow. They go and take alcohol because they have heavy heart. That is the type of wine he's talking about here. Which means the scriptures is vehemently against it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Am I, are you following me? Amen. Amen. Now, Jesus also number six. He came to reconcile man to God. Not to produce what we make man to be back to sin. Is that true? He came to reconcile man to God. Not to produce what we make man back to sin. So Jesus will not do that again. In Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. He says he came to deliver the people from their sins. He came to deliver the people from their sins. You need to follow this. So that when somebody is arguing with you, you don't want to say. You don't even need to argue with any person anyway. Or know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. In Proverbs chapter 23, in Proverbs chapter 23, and let me read from verse uh, 30. We have even said it. We've read it. It says, at the last, it bited like a serpent. And then if you look down, let me read it down. From 32. At the last, it bited like a serpent. And it stinking like an adder. And thy eyes will behold strange women. And your heart will perverse we utter perverse things. What is working? Alcohol. You see somebody when he finish drinking now, you begin to uh, I will beat you. Have you seen this man that used to act? Cleans the drunk. You see how he used to mimic the drunken people. Are you getting me? The mouth will speak perverse things. With Jesus that wants to save people from sin, give you what will send you into sin. No, he will never do that. He says, and that, look at what he says. Look at how he describes what things done. Verse 34. He says, Yea, thou shalt be as he that lies down in the midst of the sea. Have you seen the a drunken man, so, when the person is truly drunken, and then he lies down on the gutter, and he says, ah, this is good foam, this is good bed. This is good bed, and he sleeps there, I'm sleeping. Because he started from somewhere, and the Bible says, look not. Somebody says, say, drink, but don't get drunk. This Bible only talks about drunkenness. Why did he say, look not? Somebody say, look not. Don't look at it when it is uh, red. Did he even say drink small? Say don't look. Someone said don't look. Are you following me? Now, he says he will lie down like as if he's like Mr. The sea. Or as if he has lied down upon the top of a mask. That's what the 
drunkenness. And then look at this. It says, and he will be saying, they have stricken me. Shall thou say, I am not sick. I am strong. Look at me. They are beating me. I don't feel it. I don't feel it. That is the drunkenness. I don't feel it. He says, and when he shall wake, he will go and seek when it again. After he wake up and he's not he will go after it. That thing has an attraction. The moment you are attracted to it, there's something about that thing. You see some people, even as a child of God, you just, why are you arguing about it, God? And why can't we take small? There's a problem with you. Why do you even argue about it? Uh, why he said drink, but don't be drunk? And should be we can't take small. What do you want to even do with it? I said, look not. Somebody said, look not. Amen. Are you following me? And then number seven. Jesus who came to be a pattern you know for the people of God will he produce what will make people to do differently from him? No. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 21 he came to set us an example that we should follow his food steps. Jesus, hey, Jesus who loved man to the extent of giving his life for man will he give to man what will lead him to destruction? No. He went to that who is ready to perish. And then number nine, Jesus who had made his people to be kings and princes. If you look at Revelation chapter 1, Revelation chapter 1, verse 5 and 6, the Bible says there, Jesus has made us kings and uh, princes. Are you there? Yeah, Revelations okay. chapter 5 and 6. It says, verse 5 says, chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the first begotten from the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his blood. As he washed you with his blood, if you are born again, it means you are washed with the blood, isn't it? And look at verse 6. And had made us what? kings and priests unto God and his father to him be glory dominion forever and ever so, we are now priests someone say I'm a priest he has made us priests it's not only the pastor every child of God has been made priests are we getting what I'm trying to say so it's not for even any priest can keep it who made us priests? Give the priest alcohol that he will not take. No. Somebody say no. And then Jesus will never do contrary to his own Simon. He will never do contrary to him. If you look at the book of Luke, Luke chapter 21 verse 34 he said take heed to yourselves be careful lest your least at any time your hearts be overcharged start just take heed be careful and no problem someone say no problem and that is how you start say, take, be careful because when you start before you know your heart is overcharged and then you are overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this world so that the day takes you on Look at somebody say be careful. 
Amen. So it's not something you begin to argue. Or somebody will just send a question now. Uh, is it good for a Christian uh, to drink and wine? That is your problem. That means there's a there's a, there's an attraction. Amen. Amen. So Jesus will never do contrary. So those who are using alcohol today are not following the examples of Jesus Christ. But they are taught by Satan which can lead one to damnation and lead one to internal destruction. It can lead one to damnation and it can lead one to internal destruction. It's not something we should go after at all. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we have quite a lot of scriptures. So what are the instructions about drinking or not drinking that we can see in the scriptures? Amen. Let's begin to read them one after the other. What, does, what are the instructions? Proverbs. Amen. You want to give me a scripture? Amen. Amen. Now, what are the instructions? Let me begin to show. Let's see what the scriptures now say about wine. One after the other. Let's see what the scripture says. Look at Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs chapter 20. Are you following me? We have seen that... Jesus did not turn water into alcoholic wine. There are different kinds of wine. And when he was drinking wine with them, what did he drink? The fruit of the vine. Are you getting me? The fruit of the vine. He couldn't have been invited. You can't invite me now to our marriage. And when you invite me there, you say there is no wine. I now give you money to go and buy alcohol. Jesus will never do that. Because he's a priest and a king himself. And he knows what the scripture says. It's not for him to drink. When John was to be born, there was an instruction that followed him. Neither strong drink, he will not drink. Before he that came to herald Jesus, was, it was an instruction. Even in the New Testament. Amen. That he must not take any strong drink or wine. Implying the hot wine. It was said even of John the Baptist that he never tasted. When uh, something was to be born, they said he must not take any strong thing because they know it's not for priests to take wine. And then the Bible give a general knowledge. Says, Don't look at it. When this way. Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs chapter 20. What are the things the Bible now says about this thing? I haven't explained so that we begin to see them. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 1. I say, can it? What does it say here? The kind of wine he's talking about here, which means there are different kinds of uh, wine. What the type Jesus drank. Wine is a mocker. Someone say a mocker. And strong drink is ravaging. Raging. And whosoever that is deceived thereby is not wise. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. Whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. So don't begin to say, ah, you, don't let it deceive you. Don't let any person deceive you. Don't let any young person say, come now, let's take it small. The Bible just said, don't be drunk. Who told him? Don't look at it. Amen. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Is not wise. These are the things the scriptures is saying about it. Now, let me give you another one. 
We will begin to read them. Just begin to take it after talking about Jesus. What did the Bible say to stand against taking a wine? Look at the same Proverbs chapter 23. We will begin to read them one after the other. Proverbs chapter 23, from verse 30. That he said, Look not upon the wine when it is red. That is the strong drink he's talking about. When it gives his color in the cup. When you are seeing the foaming of alcohol. When it moveth itself, it is moving itself around. Because at last it will bite like a serpent. And it will stink like an adder. And your eyes will behold straight women. And your heart, your heart will utter perverse he says, and you will lie down in the midst of the you sea. You are being fooled. You lie down in gutters. It started from somewhere. Because you started by looking at it. Before it took you to the gutter. Don't look at it is the instruction. Amen. Amen. Then go ahead and see the same scriptures. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 6. What did he say? Give strong drink to him that is ready to perish. Give strong drink to him that is ready to perish. And those that you know, and wine unto those that be of a heavy heart. Look at verse 7. Lest he drink and forget his poverty. Is he not still poor? And remember his misery no more. That is what men say. say any man that is ready to perish, he thinks he wants to forget his poverty. He will perish. Because it will gradually remove him. But the Bible says, look not unto him. Look not unto him. And then look at Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. What is the Bible saying about wine? And they, they need not to go to wine, not to go to drinks, strong drinks. Isaiah chapter 5. From verse 11. And look at the woes. Woe, verse 11. Are you there? Are you there? Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning and follow strong drink and continue till the night till wine inflame them. Are you getting this now? Can you see he talks about strong drink and he talks about wine there? He's mixing the same word for the same thing. So wine can be strong drink but not all wine are strong drink. Amen. Strong drink can be wine but not all wine are strong drinks. Do we get that? So wine are not strong drinks. So when the Bible says wine and mix it with strong drink together and saying the same thing, it's talking about alcohol. Advanced level. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So when you look at this, it says, whoa, somebody yeah, says, whoa. When God is putting a curse on somebody, that is somebody that wakes up, you want to go and begin, whoa. Whoa unto you that will get up. The next thing you see you want to do is to go and take care of alcohol. Whoa, somebody say, whoa. Whoa unto those men that will just get up in the morning. The next thing they will just go and sit down between the air and just to begin to drink. Oh, my they don't have work to do. Whoa. This is what the Bible says. People will want to begin to find one thing or the other to say. Woe unto the man that rise up early in the morning that they may follow after strong drink and continue until the night till it inflames them. Till it inflames them. Can you see what he's saying there? Woe unto them. Woe unto them. If I take you to that same Proverbs chapter 31, let me read from verse 20 to you. Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31. 
We have read verse 6. It says, give strong grain to him that is ready to perish. Now, look at from verse 20. I see what the Bible will be saying there. To know that God is vehemently. Amen. Sorry, I'm talking about Isaiah chapter, the same Isaiah, verse 20. Isaiah chapter 5 from verse 20. The same five we read. We read 11. Then verse 20 to 22. Verse 20 to 22. What is this saying? It says, Woe unto them that call good, that call evil good. And the problem. You know this thing is a destruction. And there's no problem. Just take a little. And you know from a little. And say, look, Lord. You are saying, say, woe unto them that call evil good and call good evil. Woe unto them that put darkness for light and put light for darkness. Woe unto them that put bitter for sweet and put sweet for bitter. Look at where it's going on. It says, woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes. Who see problem, who will take you, nothing. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and the prudent in their own sight. Verse 22, where I'm going. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength that mingle and men of strength to mingle strong drink to mingle strong drink. He said, whoa, 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 whoa. Is somebody following me? So when you begin to argue, and then let me now show you this one. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 5. Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2. You know where Habakkuk is. Old Testament. Chapter 2 verse 5. Amen. Sorry, I've just missed uh, something there. Eh? Where am I opening my Bible here? Let me see. Something has gone wrong with my something here. Okay. Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk It's not verse 5 from uh, eh? This one is still, but there's a place I'm looking for. It says, Yeah, also, he that transgresses by wine is a proud man. Neither he that, uh, you know, who enlarges his uh, whatever. Now, this place I'm going, it says, uh, I'm go- Let me get it. Woe unto he that giveth his neighbor drink and maketh him drunk. That's what I'm saying. 15. Uh-huh. I made a mistake here to say verse 5. Sorry, please. Verse 15. Verse 15, no make him is what I wrote down here. You know, Temba and prepare sometimes. You when just say, I wrote time. 5 instead of 15. Amen. So I know it's Habakkuk chapter 5. Fine, that is where I'm going to. Are we there now? Verse 15, woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink <inaudible> or put a bottle before him. <inaudible> Some people say, well, I don't drink, <inaudible> but I buy for people. Amen. Amen. I don't drink, but I use it to Amen. do it. Woe unto him that giveth to his neighbor drink or put a bottle before him. Is this not the Bible? So if the Bible says don't even give to your neighbor, should you take? So everyone that is not taking but giving others woe to you. That is what the Bible says. It's not Paul. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink. 
War unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, <inaudible> that putteth <inaudible> thy bottle to him, <inaudible> and maketh him drunk also, <inaudible> that thou may look at on <inaudible> the <inaudible> There are different things there. Number one, <inaudible> don't give. <inaudible> don't put. <inaudible> don't let <inaudible> of them <inaudible> getting <inaudible> drunk. People, when they begin to interpret, they begin to interpret scriptures upside down. Have you seen what the Bible says? You should drink, but don't get drunk now. Is it not saying don't drink? Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink and make him drunk. This is the Bible. So when we see all these things, the scriptures are full of. Another person says, ah, the Bible says, take a little one for thy stomach's sake. You know, we are looking for one thing or the other. You think God doesn't know what he's doing. Amen. If now you get to the hospital, the paracetamol or some of the things we take, they have some contents there that is being researched. That it will take care of the body. If it is a medical thing, you know it's a medical. But should you use that as a means to go and begin to drink? Who recommended it for you? Is it your surgeon or your consultant? If your consultant recommends, go and take it. If there are particular drugs that has that thing that they will ask you to take, they won't take you go and take big stout. The one man's they won't tell you go oh, and take big stouts. You're taking one big stout in the morning, one in the afternoon, one in the evening as prescription. Doctor's prescription? No. So if you say take a little one for the stomach's sake, if you say take a little one for the stomach's sake, I can tell you, say, go to the doctor. He will tell you the kind of wine you should take. If he recommends it to you, what you should take, then take. He won't take you, tell you go and take stout. <inaudible> or go and take Hennekin. <inaudible> or go and take star. <inaudible> or go and take champagne. <inaudible> he won't tell you to do that. <inaudible> we are looking for things to please ourselves. <inaudible> People of God. <inaudible> Bible tells us. <inaudible> First Thessalonians. <inaudible> chapter 5 verse 22. <inaudible> Even if you say drink and say flee any appearance. <inaudible> abstain from any appearance of evil. Say, who unto them that call evil good? So you don't see it and go and say, well, eh, after I'm a Christian, me or Kim Mo, but at least more. Somebody said, when I was young, when I gave my life to Christ as a young boy, my father would send me to go and buy it. I said, Baba, me or Lee, Laura. He knew me for that. I became a Christ. Baba, please, it's so good to take beer. Go and show with him, Baba, please. Baba, please. I will not be so stubborn. I'm not stubborn. No, but I will. Papa, please, it's too much. 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 Papa, the one for you as a child of God. You are a child of God. Then where do you stand? How do you tell them? They already know any uh one more one wali or a baba baby or a fool. I want to hear you say, "Ma, she can." You are not. You don't have anything to show them. I be the kibayo. Or because your child wants to do wedding, you say, there are some you know? people that are coming. And if they are not going to, to I will buy the best wine. wine if you cannot take the wine, what will make you drunk? Let me take. Don't come to my wedding. What is it? Some people want to do marriage. Say, I, I want Baba, I want to get tired. But you know, Baba, I want to be one brother to be a one. I want to be a believer. That's why a believer should marry a believer. Baba, I want to be a believer. 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 I